Number 17. Two teams of nine members each engage in a tug-of-war. Each of the first team's members has an average mass of 68 kilograms and exerts an average force of 1,350 newtons horizontally. Each of the second team's members has an average mass of 73 kilograms and exerts an average force of 1,365 newtons horizontally. Letter A. What is the magnitude of the acceleration of the two teams? Letter B. What is the tension in the section of the rope between the two teams? Okay. So here I have on the left-hand side, I kind of did a little math out prior, right? So here is team two I chose to place on the left and team one on the right. Doesn't matter if you have it uh, flipped, all right? But the average mass per person was 73 kilograms. There's nine people. Therefore, the total mass on the left-hand side is 657. And again, each has an average or exerts an average force of 1,365. Multiplied by nine, we get 12,290. And then the same thing for team one, okay? Average was 68, multiply it by nine, and the average applied force is 1350, and multiply that by nine. All right, so now, question is a little tricky, but uh, what is extremely important here is to have the correct free body diagram, okay? Now, how you wanna think about this tug of war is you wanna think about uh, the tug of war occurring at two ends of a particular rope, all right? So if we think about it that way, we're essentially gonna have we could create one free body diagram, but you really want to think about it as two free body diagrams, one here and one here. If you were to combine them, you're going to lose the subtlety of the tension that's created. Okay? Love it when there's a little tension, right? Anyway, so let's first take a look at uh, the free body diagram for the red team. Okay? So let's draw our axes. So I'll draw it here and here. Now the applied force, now remember it's a tug of war, right? So the applied force that this team will be exerting will be to the left, okay? And that applied force is the total force that we calculated here at the bottom, the 12,290. So let's plug that into the chart, okay? So we can call this, it doesn't matter, F1, all right? So this is 12,290. I'm gonna leave out the units, but they're in Newtons, okay? So, great. Now. Let's start uh, drawing the free body diagram. There's something else I have to draw there, but let's start uh, by drawing the free body diagram now of the uh, second team. So we have a axis over here. Let me make it a little more centered. That's good. So now the second team, right, is exerting the uh, a force in the opposite direction here. And the total force that that team is exerting, call it F2, is gonna be 12,150. 12,150. Newtons. Okay. Now, if I were to just have these two forces in the picture, okay, what does this imply? Well, this implies then that the rope in between connecting these two teams together is going to break, right? But the, the, the rope is not going to break, all right? There has to be some other uh, force going on within the rope itself that's holding the rope together, all right? So, in, in the reference to the whole problem, right? If I look at the whole problem, I know there will be an acceleration uh, because the forces are not balanced. But within the rope itself that's connecting the two teams, there is an equilibrium relative to the entire problem. The rope is not breaking, right? The rope is moving with the system, but it's not breaking. It's being held together. So therefore, there must be some equilibrium force going on inside of this rope that's keeping it together. Guess what that's called? Tension, right? That's the tensional force. So the tensional force um, will apply, well, excuse me, will oppose the applied force. So meaning if there's a force of 12,290 newtons to the left here, there's going to be a tensional force in the rope uh, to the right-hand side, okay? Or another way to think about it is that since this team is pulling to the right, there should be a force being applied here to the right as well. But it's not this value, Okay, it has to be, remember, they have to be balanced within the rope itself. If I place this value here, that means the rope is gonna break. Okay, so um, what force is it? Uh, what, what's the magnitude? Guess what, I have no idea. All right, so we're just gonna call it T. But I do know that the tensional force that is being experienced on this side of the rope is the same 
but opposite as the tensional force experienced on the other side of the rope. So I'll call that T as well. Now, this is important. To, I'm taking it a little slower because this is an important idea to develop. This is basically Newton's third law going on in the rope. Okay? So, let's now, why don't we now create our equations? Okay? So, all right. So let's do, um, let's create the equation for this particular uh, free body diagram. All right? So we have uh, some of the forces. Right, some of the forces in the x direction should equal ma, x. Okay, I could put little one down here and one down here. Okay, and then a one for the mass. So, what are the sum of the forces for number one? Well, let's just take a look at these two. So it should be right negative twelve thousand two hundred and ninety because it's pointing to the left plus my tensional force should equal the mass of the whole team. Right of the whole. Uh, Team one, which was 657, so 657 times A, right, X. And we could say one, okay? So that's good. Now, why don't we develop the second equation for that team, for team two? So for team two, we're going to have some of the forces, right, in the X direction of team two should equal the mass of team two multiplied by the acceleration in the X direction of team two. Okay. Now, um, so the sum of the forces here, right? The force now is positive, the applied force. So that's going to be 12,150. I don't need the sum sign there. So 12,150 plus then, or I could just, I could put plus a negative tension, right? Because it's pointing to the left. I'm just going to write minus T is equal to then the total mass of team two, which is 612. So we've got 612 times then AX2, right? Okay, so does that make sense so far? So now here's the thing, all right? I know they asked question A first, but it's probably better we, we actually start with question B to find the tension, okay? Now, how do we do that? Well, we have two equations with two unknowns. So how do we solve that? Now, it really doesn't matter, honestly. If you set the tensions equal, right, that's fine, or you set the accelerations equal, it doesn't really matter, uh, quite honestly. Um, I don't know. What do you guys want to do? Yeah, you know what? Why don't we? Um, yeah, yeah. Let me let, let me first start by uh, doing letter A. I changed my mind. So uh, let's take equation number this first equation. Let's solve it for tension. Okay. So I just have to add this right on over. So plus the twelve two ninety. Okay, that cancels. Now I have tension is going to equal uh, six hundred and fifty seven a x one. Uh, plus 12,290. Okay, now great. Now let's substitute this into my second equation for tension here. Okay, so let's do that. So now it's going to be 12,150 minus, careful with your parentheses, uh, parentheses here, 657 AX1 plus 12,290. Close the parentheses equals 6. 12 AX2. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, Andrew, Andrew, hold on. You said we only have two unknowns in the problem, but wait, I see a tension and tension. They look the same, but then I see AX1 and AX2. Are they the same? Or are they different? They look different to me. Well, on the page, they, they look different because one is AX1 of, and one is AX2. But remember, in a tug of war, okay, assuming the rope holds, uh, which we which we are in this case, the acceleration experienced by team one will be the same as the acceleration experienced by team two, right? Either the, the tug of war is going to move to the left, the whole system, or it's going to move to the right, accelerate to the right as, the whole, as a whole system. So I know that they're the same for that reason. So what I'm going to do now when I start cleaning this up, I'm just going to call it A, okay? I could leave it as AX, but I'm just going to call it A for acceleration, all right, so why don't we start to now uh, start cleaning things up a little bit here. So we got 12, 150 minus 657 uh, A. So basically I'm just distributing the negative here. Minus 12, 290 is going to equal 612 A. All right, so now what am I going to do? Let me add this on over, 657 A plus 657 A. I combine these two like terms, right, in the numerator, and not in the numerator, on the left-hand side, 
So we have 12,150 plus 12,290. So we get 24,440. So 24,400 and made a mistake. And 40 is equal to now. So we just add those two together, right? So we get 12, uh, 1269A, right? 1269. So I'll just double check because I don't want to make a silly mistake. 1257. Oh, and I made a mistake in the calculator instead. So 612 plus 6 plus 657. Yeah, 12s. Yeah. Okay, so we're good there. Now, how do we solve for A? Obviously, just divide out the 1269. Divide out the 1269. Oops. I realized I made a mistake, guys, right? Because I'm constantly checking over my work. So I was just seeing if you guys were paying attention. I apologize about this. What's wrong? What's wrong with what's wrong with the math I did here? This should have been, been a subtraction. Instead, good old Andy did an addition. So you gotta love this. I don't really have to erase too much. Just hit the back button. So I apologize, guys. So let's subtract the two, huh? So we have one twelve one fifty minus twelve two ninety. Oh man, been a long day. Uh, negative one, uh, negative one hundred and forty. That should then equal what I had before, which was the uh, twelve sixty nine. So twelve sixty nine a. Now divide out the twelve sixty nine. Divide out the twelve sixty nine. Okay, so now we're going to find our acceleration. So let's see what that is. So one forty divided by twelve sixty nine. 1269, and that's going to be negative 0 0.11, okay, negative 0, 0 0.11 meters per second squared. All right, now how did I catch my mistake? Well, because when I did the math here, I realized that my answer was positive. But if I'm looking at the system overall, right, there's a greater force on the left-hand side than the right-hand side. So my acceleration should come out to be negative, okay? So I realized once I got to the end, and looking at it, I would get a positive answer. It doesn't make sense, given how I set up the problem. Therefore, I know I made a mistake. And then my job there is to figure out where the mistake is. So that's kind of why also understanding the concepts behind this are important. Because everybody's human. You're going to make a silly mistake. The only question is, are you going to catch it? All right? If you catch it, you get an A. If you don't, maybe you don't get the A. All right? So... Here's the acceleration, negative 0 0.11 meters per second squared. Easy peasy. Now, how do I find the tension? Well, you can now take any of any either equation you like that we created first, right? Either this one, or you could take this one and simply plug in that acceleration. So uh, why don't I just take, uh, it doesn't matter, I'll just take this one. All right, so we got 12, 150 minus T is equal to 612 times now, the acceleration, which I found, which is negative 0 0.11. Okay, 12,150 minus T. Let's clean it up. So we got 612, 612 times 0 0.11, 612 times 0 0.11, and it comes out to be negative, negative uh, 67 or so, 67.3. And I probably should use two sig figs, right? It doesn't matter. Whatever. It's so weird. At the end of this course, nobody cares about sig figs anymore. 67.3 plus 67.3. So here now I'm going to, let's see, what are we going to do? And then I have to add the T on over, right? Add the T on over to the right-hand side. So we get T, the tension will equal. So we got 12150 plus 67.3. So we get a value of... 12,000, so approximately 12,200 or so, 200, okay? And that would be in uh, Newtons, all right? Scientific notation would be 1.2 times 10 to the 4 Newtons. That would be the tension. All right, guys? So important problem to understand. A um, little confusing there with the tensional aspect, but if you notice, once, we, uh, once we're able to wrap our head around the concept, I mean, the math is relatively straightforward, just a simple system of equations. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it so very much. I really hope this is helpful to you guys. And uh, if it does, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. That would help us out tremendously. Thank you so very much.